Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me and welcome to everybody to this um, seminar on uh, bioethics, resolving difficult patient encounters. Uh, this has been organized by UE Medical Healthcare Development Investment Services, and it en encompasses Health Plus Network of Speciality Centers, Danata Lemarath Hospital and Moorfields Eye Hospital Center, Abu Dhabi. So today we are here because we we all felt the need to be equipped with the right skills and the right approach to when we are faced with a difficult patient encounter. As healthcare providers, it is our aim to, to provide the best healthcare to the patients. However, we understand that they themselves are going through certain difficulties and therefore may not be the most amicable patients that we come across. And today we are very lucky that we have Dr. Kavita Bhalekar who is the Director of Nursing at Health, Place, Health Plus Medical Center and as well as Murphy's Eye Hospitals. She has more than 22 years of experience in nursing with more than nine years of that in the UAE where she has been leading nursing and leading healthcare providers. And she has done her MSc nursing from, from Chennai, India followed by an MBA in healthcare management from the Geneva Business School and is also a PhD in nursing. So I would uh, like to invite Dr. Kavita uh, to tell us more about how we should go about resolving difficult patient encounters. Uh, we, uh, at the, towards the, um, you know, throughout the CME, if you have any questions, please post them in the question and answer session and Dr. Kavita will be more than happy to answer and discuss them towards the end. Uh, there will be an evaluation form link sent to you um, uh, by Pearl Events Management Services, who have very kindly collaborated with us to organize this. And we would uh, be very happy to know more about how you felt and, and how you feel we could improve this presentation. And, um, and then uh, you will then receive your certificates on, on your emails. So I hope you enjoy the session. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please just post them in the question and answer uh, section. Dr. Kavita. Hello. Good morning to all. Am I audible? Yes, yes, very clear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neha, for the introduction and thank you for uh, all of the participants for joining. I know it's early in the morning, but uh, yes, this is our commitment towards uh, patient care. So as rightly said by Dr. Neha, that the patients themselves are undergoing a lot of uh, changes in their body or in their minds, and then they are trying to seek help from the healthcare providers. And we as healthcare providers are their first line of uh, interaction. And if that interaction doesn't uh, proceed well, then that can lead to different kinds of behaviors from the patients. So hence, we just proceed and we continue to see how we can best amicably help our patients and ourselves also, because at the end of it, it is also we as human beings come in contact with these patients and even we, our minds undergo a change. So it is for ourselves as well as for the patients that we should be knowing how to deal with this uh, scenarios. So without further ado, I just go into the uh, objectives for the session. Uh, at the end of the session, the participants will be able to define the term a difficult patient, describe the difficult uh, patient and clinician relationship, uh, can understand the ethical consideration of a difficult relationship, elicit characteristics of the patient and clinician contributing towards the difficult scenarios, and utilize strategies to men for maintaining a therapeutic uh, relationship. Just to clarify here, when I say clinician, it is all um, everybody who is coming in contact with the patients. I didn't mention the word healthcare workers. So as uh, I just wanted to keep it a little more professional and hence mentioned it as clinician, but it includes everybody who actually comes in contact with the patient and who can help in making the patient journey much more happier and much more fruitful. So hence that's one uh, disclaimer or something that you can mention. So to start with, uh, if I have to say patient, what do we understand? What would we um, define a patient as? 
before going on to defining the term difficult patient, first we should define what is patient and what is a happy patient. So if I say patient, what does what comes to your mind? Maybe you can just write it down in the chat or you can have a thought process about yourself. If you if I if somebody says that there is a patient, what type of person comes to your mind? Okay, take a minute or second to think over it. Okay, so basically I and as understand or assume. Okay, a uh, patient. When I say okay, it is uh, there are two type two words for it. They are called as homographic words that are spelled and pronounced the same way but have very different meaning. Okay, when we use patient as a noun, it means it is a person who is receiving medical care. Okay, so here we are putting people first. So that per that. When I put a people first, it is a person who is receiving medical care. Another way of using the term patient is an adjective that describes the characteristics of a person, that describes that someone with a capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting upset or angry. How do you like that? Okay, so we have a patient, the terms which are actually uh, part of it, and they say that. Um, we have a patient who is receiving medical care. So for the very good patient that we have, he would be able to have the capacity to accept and tolerate delay, trouble, as well as suffering without getting angry or upset. So who becomes a difficult patient? A difficult patient is a person who is receiving medical care, but lacks the ability to accept delay, trouble, or suffering and responds to any situation being angry or upset. Very simple, right? Okay, great. So if I have to say that, why do we need to have this topic or why are we actually talking about it? So these difficult patients are those who elicit strong negative emotions from their caregivers, okay? And it is really very, very common for we caregivers to come across such kind of patients who evoke the feeling of dread, frustration, and anger within ourselves if throughout the day. Like it may not be that all patients, those whom we are receiving, but even one patient like this who comes and creates a negative emotion would be sufficient for the whole of the other patients who are coming in contact with us, okay? And in case if we do not acknowledge or manage these feelings correctly, it can lead to diagnostic errors for the doctors. It can lead to unpleasant confrontation. It can be a troublesome complaints or also can go up to legal. Legal claims can also be done on this uh, reason, not just because of an angry encounter, but that angry encounter will lead to the other unpleasant um, scenarios, which can lead to leading to a legal claims from the patient side, definitely. Having said that, patients are, are is the crux of our medical uh, practice. No practice can survive without patients. So these difficult patients can leave the staff really feeling very angry, empty, and frustrated. So not knowing how to deal with difficult patients may lead to low staff model, low patient volume, and a damaged reputation for our clinics, facilities, or hospitals. Uh, I hope I have an agreement on this topic, on this uh, scenarios, and this, um, this importance of why we are doing this topic uh, today. Um, right? Okay. I had closed my videos. So I wasn't able to see uh, any people around, but yes, it is a different, uh, being on virtual platform is a little bit of a different scenario, but uh, going forward with the topic, uh, when we are talking about a patient clinician relationship, okay, so if we see to it that we have, uh, we will definitely, regardless of how good we are in our service, we cannot avoid getting a difficult patient, okay? We will definitely have somebody who comes in and tries to manipulate or somebody who tries to get angry, somebody who wants to get something out of us. Uh, not in a normal math scenario, it may not happen to everyone, but there would be. So approximately around 15% of adult patient encounters arise when clinicians encounter with patients with 
complex or chronic medical issues and are influenced or exacerbated by social factors. So these are the patients who would definitely be regularly coming to us, who knows uh, all our uh, people, the, they are there in the clinic working, they would be talking to us, they will know our processes much better than what we know sometimes, okay? Or they could be a very new person who doesn't have an experience of coming to our clinics, okay? So it could be extremes. It could be absolutely a new person who has come and he's expecting something different from us, or it would be a person who has been regularly coming to us and that is why he knows all the loops and holes before we also know about them or we can take care of them. So ethically, do we, do we really need to take care of these patients? Yes, it is a professional and ethical obligation to provide equitable care for all these difficult patients also. Okay, so it doesn't mean that somebody is being difficult with us or getting angry with us or being manipulative with us. We are not uh, legally or ethically obligated to give care. No, it doesn't happen like that. We are supposed to be giving them the same equitable care that we would be giving any other normal patients, so-called normal patients. Okay, so it may seem really very difficult to see these patients as vulnerable, as helpless, requiring care. Okay, so we require to see the other side of the story also, because as we, as I very rightly uh, like this slide, okay, there are not two sides, there are not three sides, there are four sides for the story. Okay, very interesting, right? So there are four sides for the story. You have your side, that is the clinician side, it is their side, that is the patient's, the truth and what really happened, okay? I like this slide actually. So it actually gives us a good, uh, in a comprehensive way to look at any situation that we are going ahead. So your side, as I very rightly mentioned just now, that it is a clinician factors. Their side would be the patient factors. The truth is the situation and result is, uh, what happened is the result, okay? So if I have to put it in this manner, Okay, so every encounter of a patient will have the clinician, will have the patient, will have the situation, the system, and then will be the outcome. The outcome can be either a good, bad, or ugly outcome, whatever uh, we want to uh, specify it. But 100%, we would want it to be a, a definitely a good encounter so that our patients keep coming back to us and will feel happy and will be uh, you know, looking forward to the visit. Definitely not as a sick patient every time, but yes. So we should be the first choice that the person would want us to want to come to. So that is what we all should actually work towards. So for the clinician factors, okay, age also matters. Okay, when a healthcare worker is really very young, come right, very crisp and young inside the system, it may be a little difficult for that person to understand what are the difficulties or what is empathy, what is compassion. Okay, so we need to learn those um, emotions or those kind of feelings for the patient. Attitude of a person, biasness. We are always tired or fatigue. Okay, burnout, language barrier. Okay, we are a multilingual, um, we work in a multilingual uh, a, um, country as well as uh, healthcare. So even language can be a barrier for many of us, those who are there. Cultural barriers can be there. So. With keeping these in mind, we can, what are the common mistakes that we actually make, okay? Because when we were back in the curriculum of nursing, we, did, we would not be having how to deal with the, say, uh, 15 or 20 years down the line. We didn't have a curriculum which talked about how you deal with a patient. It only told us as to what care has to be given to the patient, how to be done. But how to deal with a difficult patient is not was not a part of the curriculum at that time, but it is really very important now. And I understand that it has been included now. So these are the some of the common mistakes that we as healthcare workers do. First of all, is like interrupting a patient's story. A patient is trying to explain to us something and we interrupt because we have heard it so many times. I remember this because uh, some of when I was a child, I mean, my mother used to take us to a, a doctor over there. And before I even finish my um, what I'm feeling or what is the pain or what is the thing, the prescription is ready and the, I'm out. I said, 
oh god the doctor already has finished giving me a prescription for what he has not even heard about it okay so there can be instances when the patient is coming at at the uh, nurse and is trying to tell the patient Uh, related to the pain or related to the symptoms that the patient is having but the nurse is busy with you know uh, doing the vitals is not actually paying attention to the patient we are not actually listening to what the patient wants to tell us okay so if you are interrupting a patient story that can cause a bit of irritation for the patient defensive responses like no that's not the case no you are wrong okay so if you are disagreeing with the patient and until you have actually heard the entire story can also lead to communication barrier can lead to a uh, interaction with the patient which is not very healthy getting into a contest like this is right and this is wrong we for healthcare professionals we want to prove that the patient is wrong and we keep on arguing with the patient trying to say that no you are wrong this is right you have like for example if the patient has to fill forms okay for a new patient who's coming and has to fill so many forms and the patient is not very happy doing it okay so we are not actually paying attention or explaining to the person like no this is required or why it is required we are just saying that this is right this is wrong okay so we require to really take care of those points then next mirroring their behavior mirroring their behavior means if they are angry we are angry we get angry okay they shout we shout we shout louder so that shouldn't be the case ignoring their concerns like for example the patient is actually telling us that the patient is having pain or patient had a vague um, vague kind of a symptom okay but you change the topic on something else and you focus more on the points that you want the patient to answer okay dismissive comments okay nobody has ever complained about it so so shouldn't a patient raise it up yes the patient can raise it up right so these are some of the mistakes that we as clinicians make it can be because of our biasness it can be because of our attitude it can be because we are tired we are uh, hungry okay and we have not had anybody to relieve us from the duty okay so stress can be there it can be because of our own cultural uh, thought processes okay so there can be so many reasons behind why we actually make such kind of interactions with the patient which are not healthy okay none of these interaction would actually lead to a healthy uh, patient uh, clinician relation right okay coming to the patient points okay so when we are talking about patients we do have uh, certain kinds of patients first we can call them as a resistant patient now resistant patients can be a angry patient or the frightened patient or the defensive person okay anger is also a way to project defensiveness okay when you are frightened actually instead of running away you actually face and you try to show that you are more powerful okay but actually the person is really very frightened or very defensive but wants to show that he is very powerful okay so that can be one way of projecting uh, the behavior or uh, the emotion okay so the patient who are frightened or who are angry defensive uh, usually present with clenched fist you may have seen this picture very frequently right you would have experienced such kind of patients really very frequently so they are the ones who say that my time is really valuable as yours okay i don't understand why i had to wait why do i need to pay is it co it is covered in my insurance okay why does it cost so much is there any discounts okay so these are the patients who are actually having certain defensive emotions within themselves and they are projecting it on the front person because they do not they find the front person as the projection as, as to lead their emotions on okay so this can be one kind of an encounter with a uh, with a patient uh, behavior second one are patient those who somatize okay somatize is like they have very vague multiple complaints but they are trying to have these complaints because or they have they have certain kind of anxiety or depression or the personality disorder okay so they are trying to seek attention by trying to put in very vague type of complaints vague type of symptoms and they will keep coming back to you and telling this is not working for me you do not understand me i have a lot of pain 
Okay, so what we do is we give painkiller and ask the patient to go, but that would not, that will bring back the patient to us because we have not actually addressed the basic issue of the anxiety or depression or personality, right? I have tried all those routines before and they are worthless. You do not care about me, okay? These kind of patients do come to doctors wherein, and they really have a lot of difficulty in trying to describe something for the patient because we try to actually physically treat a patient, okay? We may not have got the time or the understanding of trying to see that there may be psychological effect to this symptom, okay? So in there are very pruned and seasoned uh, clinicians or doctors who actually know the psychology of a patient when they spend time with the patient to understand that this patient, it is not actually the physical. The patient is trying to seek comfort. And that is why the patient is coming. So really very seasoned and pruned clinic doctors would definitely will be able to identify these kind of patients. Coming to manipulative patients. These are the patients who come on the front desk and say, if you don't, I will complain. Definitely, because these use guilt, they will use rage, they will use threat, or they will use self-harm techniques to get whatever they want, whatever they desire. First, they will start with, please, please, please. And then they will say, no, you don't believe me. Uh, no, please help me. Uh, then they will try to give you all kind of rational saying that my child is alone, my child is in the car, and I have to go. And all these patients, because they are trying to seek something from you, most probably it will be for the sick leave. Okay, it may be for the medical report. It can be for anything that they are trying to manipulate you and you may not be able to give that uh, report or that sick leave for the patient unless you actually see a patient or something, whether it is really genuinely required for the patient. So you can have manipulative patients who can be as difficult patients also. And these, if they do not get what they want, they can go and complain to the health authority or they will threaten you that they will complain to the health authority. But if we are right, it is... It is right. But only thing, we have to put it in a right manner to the patient. And then we have the frequent flyers. These patients are usually lonely. They are worried. They are dependent or embarrassed. And that is why they would want to seek additional clinical interactions due to lack of insight. They would, these patients, it, I will not, yeah, they will have lack of insight, but they will collect a lot of information from the internet. Okay, these are your Google patients who will bring a lot of information to you and say that there is something wrong with me and you aren't actually paying attention to it or the person may just not be happy with the treatment. They will definitely come to the reception and ask, is there any other doctor that I can talk to? Or the person will call you up and say, can I have my medical reports? That's when the time you know that this person is not very comfortable and has not actually been able to gain the trust of our, our clinician or of any of our staff members and hence would like to take a second opinion. So second opinion is not bad. Okay, Second opinion is the right of a patient. Definitely they should in case if they are not able to accept, second opinions are acceptable but not uh, when when a patient is trying to move to another clinician because of un being unhappy with one person. Okay, so there are differences when we say that a person is unhappy and then moving, or the person really genuinely respects the uh, information given and then is moving on to the another doctor. Okay, so there, these are some of the encounters uh, that that we usually face on our day-to-day. -day. There are many, okay? I've just picked up these four types of scenarios that can be uh, useful and will for which I can be able to share some kind of tips and points which you can take forward. Okay. Okay. Coming to the situational, okay? As I said, we have four parts. We had the clinician, we had the patients, and then we have the uh, situational okay in our situational also leads see our clinics which we um, in which we cater to the patients okay if there is long waiting time but there's no space for the waiting okay especially during uh, the covid we really had an issue with our space because we had to uh, keep the patients at a distance and we couldn't accommodate everybody within the facility okay so overcrowding lack of parking lack of signages okay uh, if you tell the patient, go to clinic number five, but there is no signage and the patient will be 
trying to search where is clinic five, right? So even lack of signages, lack of information to the patient, like there is a delay. And but why is there a delay? The patient is just waiting and going on, but nobody is coming back to the patient and telling the patient as to why there is uh, a delay. That means lack of information. Or after the patient has finished with the consultation, nobody has mentioned to the patient that the pharmacy is just next door, or the patient is still trying to move to the pharmacy or take the medication, or when the patient is supposed to come back is also lack of information, poor workflow or patient flow, okay? From registration till the doctor's clinic to the ultrasound or to the dental or dentist or to the pharmacy, if the workflow is not proper, if, you're, if you don't have proper signages for the patient, that can also lead to uh, some kind of annoyance or irritation with the patient. And finally, definitely the insurance coverage. Okay, if at the end of everything or at the start of everything, if the patient needs to, is already in pain and already in trouble and patient is seeking for help and there is no insurance coverage. So that's like the icing on a cake, wherein the patient now comes to know that he has to pay or she has to pay and then you know, the whole scenario difficulties then start. Okay, or at the end of it, the entire experience would have been good, but at the end of it, when the patient has to pay, the whole a uh, picture that we have done, a good work that has been done would be, uh, would just not work out, okay? So these are some of the uh, situations that I have actually listed down over here, or situational factors that I have listed down. You will be having definitely much more uh, situational uh, issues or system issues which, will, which you would have in your own uh, facility. So, yeah, you can add on these also to them. So coming to one scenario, okay, I would want each one of you to actually help me with giving an answer to this. So maybe in the chat box, you can write down the answer as to what can be done. So we have Mr. Smith, a 50 year old person who has taken appointment with our clinic for a medical checkup and he's coming for the first time. He's been waiting for his turn for an unusually long time, okay? And on entering the examination room, he refuses to give any information. He keeps expressing his anger to ha at having to wait. He keeps saying that his time is precious and does not like to be treated like this. So how will we take care? Anybody? So hi, Dr. Kavita. A very interesting situation and something we see very often. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in this format, we are not able to ask any of the participants to speak, but I would like, really like it if you can post it in the question and answer. Instead of a question, you can post this as a comment and then we can uh, get some feedback and we can discuss this situation. Um, okay. I, at the moment, I, since we don't have any answers or questions yet, okay. um, I, 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 will, I will proceed then because... Um, no, we'll take a minute. Let's see if somebody uh, responds. It'll be interesting to have uh, feedback from, because we have, a, we have a lot of participants here today. Uh, so I would just, you know, um, like I was just thinking about this situation and uh, uh, I was seeing that at so many levels, um, you know, maybe we could have intervened in this situation, like from the time of registration to when, um, you know, when the nursing assessment is done to actually when they see the clinician. Yes. So um, I would probably say that, you know, as soon as a patient has come and if we know um, that there is going to be a delay, we start informing them intermittently, you know, knowing that there is a 10 minute wait or a 20 minute wait from the beginning might already say, like they can open a magazine, they can start doing something, they know. Meanwhile, we have some answers. So uh, Dr. Shazia says, uh, take the patient at the side uh, and explain the process. So um, that, is, that is obviously, what would you like to respond to that, Dr. Kavita? Yes, that can be done. Definitely, we shouldn't be ex telling the patient in front of everybody. Okay, that will trigger the other patients also. So very rightly said, we can take the patient at the side and explain the process to the patient. And, uh, do, and there is another answer uh, by Neela, uh, who says, I will say, okay, you are right. We are really sorry for the delay. Okay, that's, that's very frank and open. Mm. And very um, saying positive also, telling the patient, saying that, yes, you are right. That is good. You should, you should say that 
to the patient to acknowledge that yes and i think uh, especially when when the healthcare provider apologizes uh, for a delay even though it may not have been uh, in our hands or uh, by any fault of our uh, you know actions uh, but i think even uh, in any situation actually if there's a difficult person in front of you and they are upset uh, apologizing for their discomfort uh, so there True. is a difference in apologizing that as if it was our mistake and there is a difference in apologizing that they are in this situation situation yes you so need to really apologize that we are sorry that you had to wait i think everybody would calm down a little bit and uh, be easier to handle and sam says understand and accept accept his anger and explain and then go to the physician and try to attend to the patient so great in a nutshell she has uh, put on yes. uh, very good points on that yes that's good sam and also somebody has said um, uh, offer something that might help the patient to calm down so wonderful. some sort of um, yeah okay. uh, wonderful actually most of our comments thank you actually for the comments and it helped me to understand that yes we are on the same path and uh, okay i will just go back to my discussion and thank you dr neha also mm. okay so the strategies okay so the strategies is first and foremost we say that be compassionate and uh, and empathetic acknowledge and address the underlying issues prioritize the patient's immediate concerns set clear expectations be aware of your own expectations and keep the keep in mind the goals of care so our uh, participants who have actually um given back the answers to me these are the points that we actually have discussed and we have told so if i have to say these are very big words compassionate and empathetic address the underlying issue prioritize patient immediate concern so how would we get to do it so if i have to give you these uh, sentences okay so this is how you would actually want to emulate related to being compassionate and empathetic okay we will focus on the patient listen attentively to the patient and avoid distractions okay so very very much when the patient is is complaining to you or is having some kind of uh, agitation at that moment of time stop anything that we are doing look at the patient focus on the patient listen to what the patient wants to tell us and avoid any distraction acknowledge and address the underlying issue i am very sorry for the inconvenience i realize this must be so frustrating for you okay this can be one of the sentence yes you are right okay can also be one of the sentence that we want to give to the patient prioritize the patient's immediate concern okay so at present the patient is having a delay at that moment of time as dr neha very rightly said is that is there anything else that we would like that you would like to do until the doctor is available to see you so give an option to the patient okay set clear expectations tell the patient very clearly that there is one more patient ahead of you so that the patient knows okay the patient is supposed to wait and there is somebody somebody in front of the patient be aware of your own expectations and your own limit to what you can help the patient okay you can actually give another appointment yes go ahead and ask the patient can i arrange another appointment if you wish to come back later maybe after half an hour or after one hour the patient the doctor would be free maybe you, i can arrange another appointment so that should be within your own capacity to be able to arrange such and keep the keep in mind the goal of care so that should be a win win situation and a healthy patient experience so this in a nutshell we can say that these are the points that in which we can actually help the patient or we can give these kind of sentences to the patient wherein they will be feeling calm they will understand and they will be able to understand that we are with them okay we can be empathetic with them so when i say empathize okay it can be a very big term for somebody who is uh, very new and does not understand what empathy and sympathy actually differentiates okay so i have given a we a mnemonic that is nurse okay because nurses are supposed to be compassionate and giving exemplary care to the patients so these are some of the phrases that we as clinicians or as healthcare workers can use when we are talking to the patients okay it is really very very important to name the feeling n stands for naming the feeling okay you should you can always 
express back to the patient and is say that it sounds like you are worried about and let the patient and it may be about something that is there you can also say i wonder if you are feeling angry okay it sounds like you are confused about something okay when you are putting feelings or naming those feelings you will come to know that if the person when you say i wonder if you are feeling angry the patient may say no i am not angry i am just irritated okay so you come to know okay if the patient is not related is not in the angry focus is irritated can be uh, with malleable discussion and talking the patient may understand okay then you you if you say it sounds like you are confused okay if the patient say yes i am confused then that helps you to understand that you need to give more explanation to the patient you need to give much more help to the patient right so if you name a feeling you will understand in which direction you require to take care or how your next conversation should be with the patient it it sounds like you are bothered okay if the patient says yes okay then you can explore more to why the person is uh, bothered okay u stands for understand okay you can say i understand what you are saying that helps the patient okay to know that you are on the side of the patient i understand that your treatment will affect your work okay i uh, this has been extremely difficult for you are uh, these are the phrases which when said by any clinician or healthcare worker helps the patient to understand that you are with them and you understand them you are you are trying to make it little more happier discussion and to help the patient to get treated and take the treatment back home also and be healthy respect the patient okay this must be tremendous amount to deal with i accept your feelings i am impressed with how well you have handled the situation okay so these are respectful sentences or respectful phrases which you can use for the patients okay support s yes. please let me know what i can do to help you better i will be there with you during your treatment or during your injection or during your consultation so these are the sentences or phrases that we as healthcare workers can use for support or to show that we empathize with the person and explore is e is the last one okay you mentioned that there is no one to take care of your children at home hence are you worried are you angry are you agitated do you want to go back soon okay do you want that is why you want to see the doctor soon or that is why you are in a hurry okay so that will help you to explore can you tell me more about this okay so these are some of the phrases that i would like to share with each one of you to carry forward and to have them as a as your mantra to help in bringing down the agitation helping the patient feeling letting them feel that you empathize and are compassionate with the patient okay so remember nurse name the feeling really Thanks. good dr davita and i have taken a snapshot of this screen so maybe if uh, all the participants also want to these are such useful uh, phrases and i think we we incorporate them in our practice i'm sure half the situations will just get diffused just yeah, like thank that. you thank you actually i came across this and i really felt that we should share this and nurse is something which i am definitely and yes that is what we all stand for and we all should okay so name the feeling understand the person respect the person support and explore okay so this is a mnemonic related to the phase uh, it means that you are empathetic okay going forward i'll give you one more okay so first and foremost what is what we need to do is uh, in a nutshell is you listen very carefully okay focus on the patient it is really very important to make that eye to eye contact if you are not making that eye to eye contact the whole uh, situation with the patient or the whole interaction with the patient is lost okay you have to stop your work and look at the patient make that eye to eye contact and then continue with your work the patient knows you have acknowledged the person okay so listen very uh, carefully with the patient empathize with the patient these are the sentences that i actually gave to you speak slowly and stay calm it is not that once they are screaming you scream back or they are crying you cry back no it doesn't happen okay you stay calm maintain your posture okay ask more questions to understand the problem the problem may not be that the patient has a delay or the doctor has a delay seeing the patient the problem may be that the patient may be hungry the problem may be that the patient wants to go to the washroom problem may be that the parking has to be put 
okay the problem may be something very different than what we when we think we only see that there is a delay but there may be a lot of problem with the patient because of which the patient is agitated or angry and you take care of that it is fine it is settled right you may not be able to pull the doctor uh, pull whatever re report you want to give okay that may not be the reason a patient wanting a sick leave okay getting the sick leave may on you not giving the sick leave may be a big problem for them because the person may not be able to attend duty or you no know, have a conference or go for the conference that may be an issue maybe you may be able to help the patient in a different manner okay so try to understand the question or try to understand the problem of the person employ your best resources to find solution okay you may not be able to give a print out you may be able to give a text message right okay fine maybe we can do something like that you may not be able to accommodate or bring the doctor soon but yes you can give a tea you can give coffee you can make the patient sit down you can have lunch okay ask the patient okay you can tell the patient okay you can go back pick your daughter and then you come back fine maybe the school timing is there but doc, the person has to go to the school to pick up their child and come back so use your best resources and find a solution because unless you ask the problem or name the feeling of explore more you will not understand what resource is best for this patient because all of us are unique each one of us have different uh, importance in life okay and make promises which we can keep okay please do not make promises to the patient they really feel very uh, hurt that is uh, the trust okay the trust is lost if you make promises and then you do not keep them okay know when to draw a compromise okay there may be certain situations where then it just may not it will be just difficult for you to be able to meet the demands of the patient okay so you should know where you need to compromise and end the interaction on a positive note you may hand over that patient if you are the junior most in the line hand over that patient to another senior person so that that person will be in a better position to take care of the person okay we of the patient fine so these are some of the points that are there in a nutshell which will help us to find some kind of resolution or some kind of solution for the person in case if we are having a difficult encounter it can be an angry situation it can be a manipulative situation it can be a person who is seeking for help or frequent flyers okay so why the person wants to go to another doctor you try to find out there would be some reason okay it would just be that i had come and i was waiting for one hour and nobody paid attention to me so i kalas i don't want to come back to you right so we can try to close it we can try to improve it we can give a vip uh, treatment for the patient or we can say that okay i am booking your appointment this would be your appointment this will be a thing so you follow up with that patient so there are difficult encounters definitely but if we think about it and we want to make it into a good we have solutions okay so not only the healthcare worker should make uh, changes in their behavior we also need system to be or the situation to be taken care of okay we need to audit our waiting time we ourselves as uh, directors and managers we require to walk the patient journey we need to start right from the registration till the discharge what are the areas where the patient would have found it difficult what are the areas that the we need to improve in asking you no know, improving the journey of the patient okay utilize the patient satisfaction surveys to the maximum okay that is where the patient actually talks to us and tells us whether we are good or bad okay contact the patients who have registered but left without seeing the physician okay contact a no show patient why they did not come did they go to some other facility okay or did or they have taken a booking but they would like to reschedule it but it didn't get rescheduled and because of which nobody called them to find out why they didn't come okay maybe at that moment of time they had some important work and that is why they couldn't come but we have not rescheduled that okay we need to reschedule those okay so that we can bring back our patients to us utilize staff meetings for communication and customer service training okay consider communication trainings to all our clinicians including the physician so each one of us should have these phrases and should know as to how we need to communicate with the patient in an empathetic and compassionate manner okay so the trick as dr neha in the introduction has also mentioned is to be proactive okay the trick is to be proactive so when we have when we already have a patient waiting for 15 minutes appears anxious 
and annoyed okay has come to your desk actually first one time second time before the person comes to you the third time this is the greater time to take control of the situation diffuse the negative emotions and with a respectful communication approach the patient in a polite manner okay and before the patient actually talks to you you can say i apologize okay i apologize for the wait i am so sorry that doctors i just took a name of your dr sana needed more time with her last patient okay we will get you so, uh, in soon as as soon as we can okay would you like a cup of water or coffee while you wait or if you prefer she can see you again at 130 how does it sound right so here you have proactively tried to analyze the situation that this person has come to me one time this person has come back to me second time third time definitely the person is going to explode or is going to be irritated or agitated the initially the when somebody comes to our clinic is not come in angry right they come in as normal human being ready to wait okay they are ready to wait fine but there would be issues where then where we have not communicated back to the patient and the person is looking at the time and wants to go back so why don't we proactively tell the person that yes there has been a delay but we can help you okay so offering the patient a respectful apology and option and a sense of control is usually enough for them to feel that you are on their side you cannot do much right but yes you can do this this will really be helpful okay so we need to be proactive give you another situation okay so there is a new patient as i said okay if a new patient these are the new zillion patients those who don't like to write okay and maybe we are still having a lot of paper i mean definitely we have moved to electronic there would be uh, issues where then we still require to take the consents and the confidentiality the privacy on paper okay so even filling out the forms is really a big tedious task for the patient giving patient data for the first patient who is coming a new patient who is coming to fill the forms itself will be very impatient they say take this card everything is online okay they would not want to do that okay so they will try to be impatient so we should understand ourselves that this person is going to be very impatient and i do require them to fill the form write the details okay so instead of saying no this is just the way it is i'm kindly get it done we should say that i understand it is important for you to write this forms or fill these forms it will help us to be able to serve you better we understand and respect your need for privacy and confidentiality we need to know whom to contact in case of emergency and this is for your own well being that we want you to complete the forms right so this shows that you are there okay and you can always say that is there anything else you need let me know i am here to help you okay these simple sentences will help to gain the confidence of the patient and will gain uh, will make this difficult situation will not be a difficult situation it will just you no know, erase it out because there is somebody to talk to the patient tell them this yes i am here to help you okay do you need anything else in case third situation we have we have a new payment policy okay definitely payment is something or money is something that uh, is unfortunately still a part of our healthcare okay it is not free right so uh, nothing is free and nothing would be free uh, even though we would like to have discounts and freebies okay so we need to tell our patients that yes there is a new payment policy so as soon as the patient comes itself you know you can say ms smith we have impl implemented a new payment policy and we have mailed emailed everybody this is from the health authority this is the form and this is the information that this payment policy is going to have changes to if you have any questions i would be happy to answer okay if she is not able to please tell him that you have visa or master card for your convenience and all those instead if the patient is still not happy with the payment you can say i recommend that you talk to a coordinator she will be able to help you because this is something that would you should know that you can pass it on to somebody who is more responsible to talk for the payment card okay so these are some of the situations which i wanted to highlight because either the patient is agitated or angry because of the wait either the person has a lot of documentation or paperwork to do or either there is a new payment policy will definitely cause a reaction which may not be very pleasant for the patient 
Okay, remaining things we can still take care for the patient, but these are some of the scenarios where we should proactively know that the person is not going to be very, very happy about. And we need to take care and we need to have certain kind of measures, different kind of measures in trying to mitigate and try to see that we are in a better command of the situation than the patient taking the command. Another point that I want to leave you with is our mindset. OK, I have read this uh, book and I'm really very uh, big fan of this book, but it really tells us uh, uh, the book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And it does talk to us about our mindset. This proactive is the first step, actually. So the mindset that I want to talk to you about today and leave you with is that we want the patient to understand that we are busy. We want the patient to understand that the doctor is busy. We want to understand the patient to understand that we have a limited space. We want the patient to understand that we have limited parking space. We want everything from the patient to understand. So what are we going to understand? How are we going to be able to help our patients? So it is our mindset. It is our own paradigm that we need to shift when we see First, to understand that other person, as I have been telling, we need to explore. We need to give a name to the feeling of the person. We need to find out why the person is agitated. OK, then if we start giving our solutions, it would be helpful. We cannot give random solutions for everybody. We all are unique, right? So I'll just play this video for all of us. OK, I'll stop share. Yeah, while and, Dr. Kavita, yeah, while Dr. Kavita, you're doing that, I'll just uh, invite anybody else to write any questions or comments they have on the question and answer forum. Uh, we have one comment by Zahid Hussain who says that we must manage waiting time nicely by just a good communication. So that is obviously a very, very good comment. And just like Dr. Kavita has explained how you can make that communication also good and effective. Uh, so okay. I think we are ready with the video. Yes, I'll just play that for you and let me know if it is audible. So much of what we do in our personal lives and at the office is the result of the paradigms we hold. And what we do in turn affects the results we get. Thanks for coming to the meeting today, everyone. Uh, the word paradigm comes from the Greek root paradigma, meaning pattern, the pattern we expect to see, or the mental image of the way things are. We see everything through the perspective of our own paradigm. If you see your industry as one where growth is impossible, how does that affect what you do every day? And what results do you think you'll get from your actions? On the other hand, suppose you saw unlimited prospects for growth in your industry. How would that change your actions? What we see, our paradigms, determine what we do, which in turn determines what we get. And unless we consciously stand apart from and examine our paradigms, we might never see that perhaps many of them are distorted, short-sighted, or just flat out wrong. I remember a mini paradigm shift I experienced one Sunday morning on a subway in New York City. People were sitting very quietly, some reading, some resting with their eyes closed. Suddenly, a man and his children entered the subway car. The children ran yelling through the car, throwing things, grabbing people's newspapers. Their father sat down near me and closed his eyes and did nothing. I felt irritated. I could not believe he would let his children run wild like that. After a few minutes of patience and restraint, I turned to him and said, Sir, your children are really disturbing a lot of people. I wonder if you could control them just a little more. Yeah, you're right. I should do something. But we just came from the hospital where their mother died about an hour ago. And 
I guess they don't know how to handle it. Guess I don't know how to handle it. Can you imagine how I felt at that moment? My paradigm shifted. Suddenly I saw things differently. And because I saw differently, thought differently. I felt differently. I acted differently. My irritation vanished. Compassion flowed freely. I wanted to help instead of criticizing and complaining. Once you see things as they really are, you'll think, feel, and act differently. And you'll do it automatically, spontaneously. Can you see why paradigms are deeper than attitudes and behavior? If you want to make minor changes in your life, work on your behavior. But if you want to make significant quantum breakthroughs, work on your paradigms. <laughs>